glory. Dwelling place. Self-existent. Horn of salvation. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Muslims, you should be able to rejoice too, even though you're oppressed in your minds and uh, you don't control the world. Because guess what? I know who does control the world. The God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh our God, and His Son, Jesus Christ. And uh, hey, if you become a Christian, you too can be children, as Brother David and I are, of the Most High God who created the world who controls ultimately what goes on in his divine sovereignty and in the end who will no doubt be the victor. Aren't you tired of being losers? I tell you what, I would be too. Come on over to the winning side, Jesus Christ, who won. Not, he, not only did he win over the devil in his earthly life, but he won and victored over death, hell, the grave, sin, Satan himself in defeating death and raising again on the third day. Hallelujah. Muhammad's still in the tomb. I suppose Ali and Hussein, they're still in their tombs, Nejaf and Karbala. But Jesus' tomb's empty because, praise God, he arose. He's God in the flesh. Well, we're going to show a video now, and uh, I hope that right after the video, Brother David, I think, will be with us, Brother David Wood. And uh, so let's show this second video now that is going to reveal once again, this time, not just the, the uh, readiness to physically assault anyone who would come up against Islam, but let's show now the readiness to uh, support those organizations like Hezbollah and Hamas who have in their creeds the absolute need to destroy Israel by all means possible, and that quoting from the Muslim Hadith. Let's take a look at this video right now. Brought to this campus, even though you have suggested to this audience yes. that there be no dialogue on this campus with students that are in favor of Israel continuing to exist. In other words, don't have dialogue with people that believe differently from yourself because soon they'll be, and you said, I quote you, dog in on Hamas. So my question to you is let me ask you this. Do you I know you'll say that Hamas is, was democratically elected, but so was Hitler. Ooh. Do you, ooh, do you believe, do you believe, Malik Ali, yes, being brought here year after year, uh, that Hamas, the terrorist group, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, do you believe that they are terrorist groups? Do you support Hamas? Uh, yes. Do you support Hezbollah? Uh, yes. Do you support Islamic Jihad? Uh, 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 yes. Do you support Jihad on this campus? Jihad on this campus? Yes, if Jihad on if, this campus. If it's an afford... Jihad on this campus. Oh. It's a conspiracy! It's do a conspiracy! You, do you support Jihad? on this campus. As long as it's in the form of speaking truth to power, yes. And, 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 the reason why I said, do not sit down, 
that it's not a good idea to sit down with Zionists is because when you sit down with Zionists for cookies and cake and talk about issues, that kind of thing, right? It gives the impression that Zionism is like, it's okay, it's okay. Now, you Jews, in all due respect, you wouldn't sit down with Nazis for tea and cake. No, you wouldn't. If a Nazi came up to you and said, look, 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 we're, we're the Third Reich, we're the Third Reich, you're Jews, let's sit down for tea and crumpets. You would say, get out of here. I ain't, I'm a Jew. I ain't sitting down with no Nazi for tea and crumpets. Y'all the new Nazis. So we're saying, we ain't sitting down with y'all for tea and crumpets. Right. Well, whether it's just this uh, gentleman's African-American uh, ubonics or whatever it is, his uh, ignorance of the proper English grammar certainly doesn't come through in his ants and his yalls and his rants and his raves. Nevertheless, uh, we don't judge a man by his ability to use the language. If that's the case, we would all fall short. But uh, here's a man who is saying he openly supports Hamas, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, and in the, t in the uh, phrase Jihad, uh, essentially, ultimately, in Islam, in Muhammad, he modeled the true meaning of Jihad, which means struggle, and the greater Jihad, really, even though the Hadith says there's a greater Jihad, a spiritual Jihad, a lesser Jihad, the physical Jihad, Muhammad himself seemed much more concerned with the quote-unquote lesser Jihad, and the Quran seems to contradict in Surah 495, it says, that those who do not go and fight jihad with their bodies and their persons, they are lesser Muslims than those that do. And uh, so here's a guy who says, hey, he Hamas is great. Hezbollah, I mean, he says, Hamas, I support Hamas. Hezbollah, I support Hez Hezbollah. Uh, jihad, Islamic Jihad, I support it. And I would have said I support Islamic Jihad on this campus, but like most Muslims, they know very slyly where to draw the line. Because if they're, why did they draw the line? Why did he hesitate from answering clearly? Because he believed that if he said, yes, I support Islamic Jihad on this campus, he believed that somehow he might get in trouble with the law. What a horrible situation for Muslims in the West to have to curtail their speech because they know that if they vent their true feelings, their true beliefs, they are going to be jailed and imprisoned. And that's the state of Islam in the West today. Now, I think we have Brother David Wood online with us. So, Brother David, I want to welcome you to our show. I apologize for the technical difficulties. I'm going to be quiet and allow you to speak for a while because I've said a lot. We've showed two videos, and this will be your first uh, words on the program. So, welcome, Brother David Wood. Brother David, can you hear me? Brother David, can you hear me? I hear you. Do you hear me? Yes, go right ahead, Brother David. Uh, I, go ahead and comment on the two shows, that, the two uh, video clips that we had, and say whatever you'd like. I'm going to be quiet along with the viewers and listen. All right, well, going back to the, uh, I guess I'll talk about the first video briefly first. Um, uh, history repeats itself, Pastor Joseph. Yeah. And uh, when, you, when you look at what happened, uh, you'll notice what happened with this man, Lars Vilks. This, this guy wouldn't really be interested in Islam if it weren't for the fact that uh, other cartoonists like him were threatened uh, in past years. So follow the progression of events here. You have countries like Sweden and the Netherlands. And these countries invite Muslims to come to their countries. Many of them refugees. Many of them uh, can't stand the violence of their own countries. And so Sweden and Denmark say, here, come, come to our countries, we invite you in. And, uh, you know, some of them, many of the Muslims live peacefully, but many of them uh, don't. They start calling for, uh, they start calling for Sharia law and demanding Sharia law, attacking women who don't wear the veil. Uh, they they uh, engage in terrorism. And what happens is, uh, you know, the Danish newspaper got fed up with it and published some cartoons about Muhammad. So follow the, follow the chain of events. Uh, Western nations say, hey, we invite you to come to our countries to live more peaceful lives, to get away from the violence and oppression of your own countries. And then the Muslims who come, they try to oppress everyone. They try to force everyone to submit to Sharia law, which was the main problem in their own countries. Uh, so people get upset about this. They're upset that the, 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 the violence and the rapes are...